I'm going to demonstrate how to make and then use air saturated water standard for checking on the calibration of luminescent sensor dissolved oxygen probes. We're going to be following the standard operating procedures from the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality labs uh, uh, methods for these types of probes and we're going to be using uh, this standard to verify uh, calibration. It's essentially an accuracy check that you're going to want to do before and after doing field measurements to uh, document that a calibration has stayed true over the course of a sampling period. This is the same type of standard that we recommend using for doing demonstrations of capability. Uh, that should be done annually by anybody that's going to be using the meter to collect data. And there's more information that's available about uh, how to use the standard in the DEQ's uh, SOP that's available upon request. So similar to when we did a DO meter calibration where we saturated air with water, we're now just going to flip that on its head kind of and, and take water and saturate it with air. Uh, so again, we're going to be making our own standard and we are going to need a stable temperature and uh, barometric pressure conditions in order to reach equilibrium between the air and the water. So the key elements to remember when you're doing this is that uh, if you give this sufficient time under stable uh, conditions, you're going to reach a predictable concentration of oxygen in uh, this water. Uh, and, it, and that's going to be at, a, at what we call completely saturated or 100% saturation. Now 100% saturation is going to have a different concentration in terms of milligrams per liter depending on what the temperature is and what the barometric pressure is. So colder water, it, it tends to hold more oxygen. So you've got higher concentrations of milligrams per liter dissolved oxygen in colder water. Likewise, if you have more air pressure pushing down on the water, you're going to be forcing more oxygen into the water and again you're going to have a higher concentration of oxygen. So you get this type of slope that's shown on this graph. The higher the temperature, the lower the milligrams per liter of oxygen at 100% saturation. Uh, likewise, uh, if you go up in elevation where you have less barometric pressure, you decrease the concentration of milligrams per liter. Okay, so um, the process of equilibrium for air and water is not an instantaneous process. So we try to speed the process up. We use an aquarium pump to deliver air to the water. We use a diffuser stone and a regulator that I'll show you in a second. Likewise, we use a stir bar uh, with a stir plate to help make sure that we bring all the water up to the surface uh, so that it has an, a chance to uh, have contact with the air. So you could kind of do the same thing with a, a bottle filled with air, with water and some uh, headspace here, some air in it, and you could shake it, but you, you would have to be very careful that you didn't oversaturate or supersaturate the water, uh, which you can easily do. Um, so doing that sort of shaking, you can actually add, you can push too much air into the water. Likewise, even using uh, something like this, I'll try to not soak myself, that's going to force uh, excess air into the water and so it's going to take a while for that to off gas. Uh, and even I think if you, if you crank up a stir bar really fast, there's a potential that you could supersaturate. So we want to do things uh, moderately in this process. So let's go ahead and uh, show you how to, how to make this standard. So I've got a vessel here that I'm going to be able to put about one and a half to two liters of water in. And I'm going to use water from this tap, which uh, happens to be uh, deionized water. And I'm going to put about one and a half liters in here. I happen to know, because I uh, 
been doing this for a while at this location that the water coming out of this tap is going to be at right about 100% saturation uh, and it's going to be it's usually pretty near room temperature so I would uh, fill this up put it on top of my stir plate and I put a little uh, thermal buffer on there just a cloth to kind of keep any heat that's generated from the stir plate from translating up into the bottle. I'll throw my stir bar in there. And get that going slowly, hopefully. There we go, just stirring the water about. And then I'll set up my aquarium pump with a diffusing stone. Set this up like so. So this is just a basic aquarium pump that I'm going to be using and um, nothing special about it but I do use a little regulator here to help control how much air is, is blowing through. Uh, too much air, see if I can get too much air here, that's, pro that's more air than you need. If it's really cranked up, totally open, there's a good chance you're going to supersaturate. So you would, you're ideally you're going to be looking for just a steady stream of air, and it's kind of tricky to do. So I won't uh, spend too much time doing that. That's even a little bit more than you probably need. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to let this sit for 30 minutes, doing this. Uh, with the aeration and the stirring. And you would want to record the time that you started doing it, what the air temperature is. I, if you're able to use a DO probe, I, I recommend doing this. Um, recording the temperature, uh, the air temperature, which I was able to get from a conductivity probe using a, a Thermo Orion uh, multimeter here. Uh, and then go ahead and have the probe in the in the water so that you can uh, track the progress of the standard. Um, if you're able to do that, I recommend that you do that. Uh, if, if you need to be calibrating the meter while this is being set up, um, that's okay too. Uh, but especially as you're uh, learning the process and getting comfortable with the uh, equilibration process, I recommend doing uh, documenting what you're getting. So again, 30 minutes with the air pump on. After 30 minutes, turn off the air pump. I'm going to go ahead and leave the stir bar going. We want this water to be within about 2 degrees centigrade of the air temperature. You see this morning um, here before 7 o'clock it was a little cool in our laboratory, 16 degrees, and the water temperature was uh, still at 20 degrees. It hadn't cooled down like the air had. So this is not ideal, but uh, that's, that's what happens uh, when you're doing this stuff in, in the real world. So um, that's going to potentially become an issue. Um, but I, I waited 30 minutes with the aeration. Uh, I took another reading, still very close to 100% on our saturation waited another 30 minutes with it doing just this and got another reading again pretty close to saturation so you can see the water is cooling down a little bit trying to get in uh, and the air is warming up and the water is cooling down so that's what I did in this standard here and so this has uh, gone through the whole process 30 minutes with air 30 minutes without now it's ready uh, to do my calibration verification. I'm going to go ahead and not use the guard here and just be careful with the probe. The guard does uh, take a little bit longer to equilibrate uh, temperature wise. It, it can slow things down. It is, I do recommend using it in the field. So I'm just going to wait for the temperature to equilibrate here and then I will record what I get 
in my water standard at a, the time, temperature, pressure, percent saturation, and milligrams per liter. And this here is the theoretical reading. And the theoretical reading is going to be the predicted value that we talked about based on temperature and pressure. USGS has a great website. Uh, if you search for USGS DO tables, uh, it's got a calculator for you where you can enter a temperature and barometric pressure. Uh, the same formula was used to generate this table. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get a theoretical value for the temperature of 19.3. It's going to be about right about in here and a pressure of approximately 760. So 760 and 19.3 should be somewhere around we're a little bit less than 760 and we're a little bit lower than 19.5 so we're going to be somewhere around 9.1 as a theoretical. So 9.1, 9, our time is 9.12, our temperature is 19.3, barometric pressure is 759, percent saturation 97.9, We'll change the mode to get milligrams per liter, 8.97. So we've calculated that this theoretical is going to be right around 9.1. And then what we want to do to uh, <clears throat> see if our calibration is within the criteria that we, that we expect, we'll take this milligrams per liter and we'll subtract the theoretical value. So 8.97 minus 9.1 is going to be a negative 0 0.13 and our criteria are somewhere between plus 0 0.4 and minus 0 0.3 essentially plus, plus or minus 0 0.3. So we're, we're right in there close to a zero difference and so our, we're okay here for our calibration. So um, on our field sheet, we would want to record the meter number, the time that we did our accuracy check, uh, all of this information and we would circle yes for uh, the fact that we passed our verification criteria. Again, we've recorded two times here to document that we have a reasonably stable standard. Uh, they're within a tenth for both milligrams per liter and temperature. That's what we want to have documented so that we know that our standard is reasonably stable. If we were doing a, a DOC, we would want to take the probe out and take four measurements and follow the DOC procedures. So that's it for air saturated water. Thanks for your time.